nation. Okay? Oh, yeah. See? They agree. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring this to 27. I'm comfortable with 27. What you see right here. Nah, maybe 27 is a little too much. We're going to bring it down a little bit. Hey, sis, you in the hills. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this right here? This is a recording. It's a Zoom recording. See, that's the symbol for Zoom, but you see Ring Central. Ring Central and Zoom use the same platform for the recordings, video recordings. They, they have an agreement with each other. So, got some wind in my background because it just started blowing. And you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a tent that fell out there, so I got to go and pick it up. But it'll be okay on the ground where it is, because uh, only part of it collapsed. Only because of the wind. It's a collapsible tent. That's to keep it from getting damaged, so that the, the legs will flex and collapse in on itself. Okay, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I use the tents for storage. What I'm doing in this right here, I did a video earlier and I had to restart the computer. And when I restarted the computer, I labeled that and I'm going to splice the video together. Okay. I want you to pay attention. This was a conference call regarding Penny Mac. We're talking about that case. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't even want to talk to you guys about all the stupidity that's been happening in that case and how to this day they've been trying to block me from being a part of it, even though they added my name to the case. Even though they say I'm the ringleader. They don't want me. They they did bring me into the case. But when I started following my motions, uh, sorry, affidavits. Oh, Lord, if you guys only knew about verified affidavits. <sighs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me show y'all something. I don't see that without me, my life is incomplete. Oh, don't, 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 don't you dare think that it ain't true okay ladies and gentlemen I need to show you what's in our PDF section but I made much too late what do you do everything that you what ladies and gentlemen this folder right here summary judgment proposed order what I am um, going to suggest is that you go here and you download everything. By the time the video is up, I will finish adding the case law. I just went over this memorandum of laws, but I got one more section I'm going to add so that it's solidified. Okay, this section right here talks about this is an ordinary foreclosure suit. Ladies and gentlemen, an ordinary foreclosure suit Pay attention. Oh, it even talks about the owner of the equitable redemption are the widow and the five infant children of the deceased mortgager. The mortgager died in testate. Okay? The widow as ex executrix leased the mortgage premises for a term of years not yet expired to expectant assigner. Equitable redemption, ladies and gentlemen, is what they did. What state is that, by the way? New Jersey. Jersey! So, ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to get to hear in that video is my talking to some of our clients who have mortgages with these companies. And the QWR is essential. If you haven't done the QWR, Listen to the video, follow the steps, because we go over each single step, each single document. I go over each single document explaining how and what is to be placed in the document, how you don't need to alter the document because it covers what the law requires. Okay? It is, this is uh, Gladys Knight, and this is Our Love. Okay? One of those my favorite song type things. Okay? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
we went over every aspect of the document for your benefit. As you hear me say in the video, and I wasn't planning on putting that video up. That's why I had to ask them for their permission to put the video up. So you'll get to see everything that we talked about in this video. It's populating now. I will combine it with the previous video. And so both will be up. And ladies and gentlemen, my suggestion, there ain't no music in the video. It was a legitimate conversation. This was a planned conversation. We were supposed to have this conversation, but this is almost a bi-weekly conversation. We don't include anybody else in the conversation, just the members who are involved. Well, we're going to involve you. We're going to let you hear what we talked about. Look, let me, let me see if I can explain. I started getting a lot of emails about mortgages. I told you I don't have a mortgage, and so mortgage, it's debt and all that stuff. Those are not my main fortes. But if I get enough people wondering, worrying, asking, then I will do a video on it. I will focus on it and do some research on it. Well, what I did is I, man, how do we take care of these stupid judges who don't want to follow the rules? Man, you, you can't sue a judge because they're immune. So how do you pay a judge back? Filing a, a judicial misconduct complaint is a bunch of bull crap because that doesn't do any good because they can choose whether they want to listen to it or not. Oh, snap. Only Congress can remove a judge because Congress appoints the judge. Well, wait a minute. Now, by the way, let me explain something to you about that. Do you know Congress has no authority to appoint a judge? They don't have any authority. That's a different branch of government. But they they came up with these articles, these administrative rules. It is the Supreme Court that represents the judicial branch of government. That's where the judicial power lie. And they were supposed to be appointing the judges. Congress can appoint different district courts with judicial power, but the Supreme Court was the one that was supposed to be doing judicial appointments. We ain't gonna go into detail about that. They know because that's the judicial branch. Separation of powers prevents Congress from sitting up there stacking courts. You follow me? That's why separation of powers is there so that Congress can't stack courts. But nobody challenges it as unconstitutional for them to select judges based on their political positions. Okay, but then couldn't the Supreme Court stack itself if the public voted the members in and if they didn't have life tenure? Well, the reason why they have life tenure is so that they won't have any pressure to do this or do that. And then it'll be fair to everybody. That ain't worked out too well, has it? Okay, there is nothing in the Constitution that says it has to be that way. Well, let me get back to this conversation, ladies and gentlemen. People were needing some assistance. So the idea was to tell them, wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen, what you didn't understand is that the foreclosure, the whole foreclosure process, they changed it so that they could have a way out. So that they could do what they are doing. Well, we have to unchange that. Well, how do we unchange that? Well, if they have a right to use non-judicial foreclosures as summary proceedings, we have the right to go in through a non-judicial foreclosure summarily the same way that they do. It's called equal protection of law. They say, well, the reason why they get to do it is because there's a default. Well, you're going to go in for a default as well. What default are you claiming? Ladies and gentlemen, you're claiming a default in the fact that they are claiming that this is a secured loan. By making such a false presumption and a false claim, and by simulating a judicial process, i.e. foreclosure or attempted foreclosure or threat of foreclosure or claiming the trustee of the deed of trust has any power, the deed of trust is invalid, ladies and gentlemen, because it doesn't secure any collateral. Go ahead. That's the whole argument. That's what we're saying in the complaint. The deed of trust does not secure any collateral. It's after... Um, acquired collateral which means it has nothing to do with the property 
has nothing to do with the original agreement. The deed of trust is a separate agreement, which is not secured by a loan. The, the deed of trust is not secured by a loan. The actual loan agreement is secured by a loan. And that's not the note. <laughs> Pay attention. You don't have a note with the bank. Your promissory note is not with the bank. It's with the previous owner. You don't believe me? Go take a look. Your promissory note is with the previous owner. Your promissory note with the bank is for money. The promissory note with the bank is for money. Previous owner, money in a house. The bank, money, and nothing. That's why they need the deed of trust. If it was one straight deal, it would be one straight contract. You don't believe me? Go to the car dealership and see if you have to go through anything called closing. Well, you do have to go to closing. When you come there the first time, they run all your credit and you come back and you sign the papers. Yes, same papers. Nothing new. Well, then you put the car up as collateral too. It's the same thing. Ah, but it depends on how the transaction was done. See, we're just dealing with the transaction. The transaction for a house, you go there for a loan, and you're going to use the money to go and purchase a home from another entity. Okay, that's a money transaction. That's It's literally called a money transaction. That is not a home purchase finance transaction. Okay, your home purchase finance transaction is with the seller of the other property. And if he's using a bank, then that's who you're going through. That's why they give you the escrow process so you're convoluted about all of this. Okay? Technically, when the money goes into escrow, it's going into your account. That's why you don't see it. So the only thing you're going to do is highlight all of this. It's already been done. You're going to go over the rules for summary judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. I'm going to have to download this song. Not not the instrumental. I already have the instrumental. I want the actual uh, George Benson's version of Everything Must Change. I I, I like Sanborn. Okay. I, I think it's perfect and everything. In law, a summary judgment, also a judgment as a matter of law or summary disposition is a judgment entered by a court for one party against another party summarily without a full trial. A fact finder has to decide what the facts are and apply the law. Ladies and gentlemen, that's coming from Wikipedia. Okay? W-I-C-K-E-D. Wikipedia. So, because people get to put their opinions in this junk. That's And they make it seem like the information can be relied on in every aspect. Ladies and gentlemen, Wikipedia is just like YouTube. Taking somebody else's word for something. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to YouTube. And I want you to learn what summary judgment is. Okay? I want you to learn what summary judgment is because that's what this is all about. I promise you, you ain't seen nobody bring no summary judgment petition in foreclosure. The reason why you get to bring a summary judgment petition in foreclosure, because your loan is a quote-unquote believed to be secured loan. You, Your argument is, this ain't no secured loan, and I need a summary judgment from the court documenting this ain't no secured loan. The judge must hear it based on the law. They're going to say it is a secured loan. And then you bring up the collateral. And they have to agree with you on the collateral issue. Gotta go, y'all. 15 minutes is all we gonna do right now, alright? Y'all take care. Goodbye.